Why is a bad question? Unless you have the skills that you're learning here, okay? All right, let's say, for example, and, and, and I've, I've experienced this many times with clients. Uh, they will come in with this problem, all right, this problem right here. And this problem is a 10. And then they'll go back to their past. And say, uh, they have this problem and go, why do I have this problem? And what they'll do is they'll drift back to the past and they'll find this experience that happened to them at seven years old. And when they go back to this experience, they feel the emotions of this also. So then they experience this. They go back to the why. And what are they doing? They're building proof on how to have this problem. Does that make sense? And then when they do this, are they, they're building a belief system. And then, that's, then they think, okay, I've had this, but why did this happen? And then they'll go back over here, and they'll have another experience, and then all of a sudden, they have this neural net highway of a great excuse to have this problem. Now, usually, therapy does this to you, too, guys. Because, I, and I'm not against therapists, and I, and I love them, because um, they're great people. They're trying to help, help each other. They're trying to learn, and they learn to model, but... Therapy, this is what therapy basically does. Not at all therapists, though, guys. There are good therapists that do help. But most of the time, they go back to the root cause of your problem, okay? The root cause is because this happened. The root cause is because this happened. So figure out how to live with it. Do you hear it? Figure out how to deal with your stuff. Tough it up. Cope it. Deal with it, okay? Now, I don't look for the root cause, I want to know how you know you have a problem. Now, the problem is, is when you go back and you're looking for why, you're building a great excuse. And then you'll find a belief system to support it. And some will say, well, I came in with this problem at birth. Therefore, this is my life lesson. And I had this lady, and this is the truth. She came in, and she had this experience. And I said, well, how many times has it happened to you? She started counting 17, 17 different times. This is my life lesson. I said, are you a slow <laughs> learner? You know, 17 times, maybe 15. But the problem is, is we didn't know how to let go of these. Does that make sense? And so what we do with the skills that we have, this is a bad reason, asking why. And I always suggest, well, let's ask better ones. Now, notice what happens when I say, I have this problem today, and I go, Why? What does why do? It takes you to the past, and you re-experience it, right? You go back, and you feel all the reasons why. So here you are. You're supporting the problem. Now, what happens if you ask, how can I change it? Where does it take you? It doesn't take you back here, does it? It looks for options. Where can I go? What can I do differently? How? Now, of course, when you ask these, it doesn't go back into the problem okay now I do ask why but I don't usually look for why this is what you feel now and you go back to your past and I say hey let's go change this past you go well hold on this is who I am this is my life I mean my father did I love my father even though it was bad I this is my life who will I be if I let go of this Okay, now that's a belief system, and that, and they, and and you will too, guys. We're going, you're going to go back, and you say, "Hey, let's change this crap." Uh uh This is who, who will I be if I let go of all this crap? Who will I be if I let go of this trauma that happened to me when I was five years old? And after, of course, after we go back and we clean it and we release it, guys. Now, this is really important to understand this concept right now. You can hear the hum above your head. You can feel the air in the room. You can hear my voice. You can feel your shoes. Everything before now doesn't exist. Yeah, you were five. You're not five anymore. If you realize the past doesn't exist, and if you go back to any experience, no matter what it is, and if you begin to feel it, it's alive. And I want to help you understand if it's alive. Memories buried alive never, never die. Now, I want to help you understand this. The concept is right now is real. 
you are not driving over here. You're not at work today. You're here with me this moment. This is real. But if you go back to that experience, and I do have people go back to the experience and to experience it for the last time. Now listen to me, to experience for the last time. Because when we go to the experience and we release what makes it alive, what makes it alive? It's the rejections, it's the hurts, the sadnesses, the fears, the emotional traumas. Guys, if you have hurt inside you, experiences that happen to you at five years old, it will drive your bus. That's why you currently create problems. And so what we, if you went back and you're trying to make it bother you and you try to put yourself in it and you're looking for the problem and you can't do it, that's great. You're free. But if you have it inside and you're running from it, everywhere you go, you take it with you. And the crazy thing is, it'll show up on a radio. The song will show up. It'll show up in a look. It'll show up in a sound. And guess what's driving the bus? Your past because you didn't let it go. And that is the most powerful part about this whole seminar is that you can change the past and how you see it because it's over. That's the best thing about your past. So we do go look for the past and I do, I ask you to do your homework. What's the homework? Look in your past. See what the patterns are. And as we go back, we're going to go and we're going to use the tote and we're going to release every emotion, everything. And then what's going to happen when you release this, you'll find peace in the memories and you'll find peace today in order to have a problem you got to do it right and the problem has its roots so we do I do look for it but see the difference in this why in other why's because I've had many clients come in and said hey I've been to a therapist and when I left I was ready to commit suicide when I left I cried for six weeks I didn't want to go back. Now, now I do have clients who, who will come to see me and we will clean out the stuff. As a matter of fact, you'll go to the memories that we cleaned out, it's gone. And, I, and I, guys, if you want help, I'm serious. I'm really good at what I'm doing. I'm proficient. I work hard. I give you my heart. I give you my mind. And you're my entire focus right there. I want you to be free. And you know why I want you to be free? It's because you have children in your life. You have people you can touch. And as you touch them, the world changes. That's my passion. It was adults who hurt you. And you're an adult now. So you can make a difference in that child at the grocery store that you don't even know. Or your children. Or wherever you go. That's why I'm here. Because I was hurt too. And you know what? My dad, he loved me at his, at his level of love. He was hurt too. Hurt people hurt others. That's how it works. So we want to heal our hurt. So why? So we won't hurt anybody else. The shortcut is to acknowledge that every problem, whatever it is, is an illusion. It's Absolutely. non-existent. It's an illusion, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And once we are aware of that, then we can work. We can work on it. Change it. I mean, really, it is all an illusion. But it seems awful real when we go there. Isn't that true? That's very good. And guys, the illusion is inside you. The creation is inside you. Sound good? All right. So, so definitely, we want to go to the wise and we want to destroy the past. Now, guys, when you go to the past, let's say, for example, um, remember I have this memory of Bob and I. You know, Bob did this to me. And then uh, last week, uh, this is a 10 memory, and then I started attracting people who are like Bob. When you go to the past, what you want to do is release the emotions in it, release the feelings in it, and then when you get it down to no emotional anything, we want to put love in it. That means we want to send love to whoever's involved. Now, why do we do that? Who are we really loving? Right. Because, see, this is your how-to, and you've acted those roles. You actively look for those people, not consciously. I mean, and somebody said, uh, you create your problems. You attracted this stuff that you have in your life. I said, bull crap. I would have never picked this stuff. But on an unconscious level, the stuff went in, and we did it. But we're not guilty. We're doing the best we can.